Mr. President, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, or maybe I should say guten Morgen. Uh, my name is Brian Griffiths, and I have the honor of being invited to be chairman uh, of this, the 44th St. Gallen Symposium. As a result, it's my great pleasure to welcome you, especially those of you who are from abroad, to this wonderful country, the city of St. Gallen, and now the symposium. Some of you have come for many years. Thank you for coming back. Others have come for the first time. Some of you have come a long way, speakers, panelists, participants, media participants, and a very special welcome and thank you to you. We have 200 leaders of tomorrow here and 600 leaders of today. And I should say, despite my age, that's not why I was invited to be chairman. <laughs> I hope you'll enjoy the experience. You'll find it interesting. You'll meet interesting people. You'll engage in serious discussion. And you'll have some fun. This is, I think, the 16th consecutive year I've come. And I'd like to tell you why I think the St. Gallen Symposium is something different. First of all, there's the location, this wonderful medieval city of St. Gallen which for a Celt, I'm a Welshman myself, but for a Celt like me, uh, it's a sentimental thing that an Irish monk by the name of Gallus wandered into this part of uh, what is now Switzerland, trying to deal with the existing hordes of people here and so on, <laughs> was helped by a bear. And as a result, we have here in St. Gallen a World Heritage Site in his honor. Secondly, one reason I love this symposium is that it's multidisciplinary. It's a genuine marketplace of ideas. Economics, politics, philosophy, science, ethics, business, innovation, sociology. And the subject that we're tackling today, the clash of generations, is really why the seminar was set up. Back in 1970, in 68, I was a young academic teaching at the London School of Economics. And there were student riots in the spring of that year. And I remember we had to close the LSE for six weeks, something which was, in a way, an extraordinary rebuke to an academic institution. Here in St. Gallen, people said, we can't let this clash of generations continue. And in May 1970, two years after the riots, they inaugurated the St. Gallen Symposium. The strap line was three days in May, and it still is three days in May, the leaders of today engaging with the leaders of tomorrow. So throughout this symposium, you'll be confronted with ideas. Do keep an open mind. Be prepared to engage in dialogue and debate. And thirdly, one reason I love this uh, symposium is it's different because it's run entirely by the students. 26 students for the past nine months have withdrawn from their normal academic program. They chose the subject. They designed uh, our agenda today. They chose the speakers, they contacted them, they've arranged all the logistics, they've raised the funds, and they are hosting the event. More than that, I counted in a book which was sent to me about the symposium that there are over 350 students who are serving us today as participants uh, in, in this symposium. Finally, let me just say something about the subject. I think the subject is extremely important. And in thinking about it, I'm reminded of a, a philosopher who had a huge impact on me, Edmund Burke, Irish-born, English politician and a man of letters, wrote a very famous book reflecting on the French Revolution. And this is what he said, society is a partnership not only between those who are living, but between those who are living, those who are dead, 
and those who are to be born. We are not living through the kind of political revolution, certainly not in Western Europe, that uh, the violent political revolution that he saw in France. But we're living through a technological revolution as we've seen rapid globalization. We've also seen over the last few decades profound cultural changes. And the unwritten social contract in Britain, in the United States, and in Japan, full employment, a welfare state, minimum income, all of these have been challenged. And I think we're going to have a feast uh, from having some insight in what people are going to say uh, today. So please, uh, if I can echo the sentiments last night of one of the student leaders who organized this event, enjoy, debate, connect. So thank you very much. <laughs> It's now my very great honor to welcome the president of the Swiss Confederation, uh, Monsieur Didier Burkhalter. I asked him, was there any particular way in which he wanted to be introduced? And he said, just say, welcome Didier. <laughs> I think that says so ma much about the man's modesty and his sense of public service and he's got a great record of public service here in Switzerland. Frankly, I'm a little surprised that he made it. Yesterday, he was in Moscow with Mr. Putin, then in uh, Brussels with the president uh, of the European Commission. Because as the foreign minister of Switzerland, this year he has responsibility as the chairman of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, which is at present doing so much to try and help solve the crisis uh, in the Ukraine. As a result, I would like to thank you, sir, very much indeed for making the time to come here. Ladies and gentlemen, would you give a very big welcome to Monsieur Didier Burkhalter.